There is a major update coming to Cardano, an update that can change Cardano forever and potentially help Cardano solve the blockchain trilemma, a problem that no blockchain has been able to solve so far. So will Cardano actually be able to solve this trilemma? Don't worry, I will explain to you what it is in this video. And even if they solve this major problem, what does this mean for the price action of Cardano? Also, make sure to hit that like button. It really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's get into the content. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. Cardano's roadmap is entirely different than most other blockchains in this space. Most blockchains follow Mark Zuckerberg's motto of move fast and break things literally. They just throw something out there and then it runs into issues and there are just so many problems. But Cardano is doing it completely different. They are moving very slow with a research-driven method. And to understand Cardano, what they're doing and where they are going, you have to understand the history of Cardano. I'm gonna give you a very quick breakdown. So Charles Hoskinson, the creator of Cardano, actually first created Ethereum along with Vitalik Buterin and Gavin Wood, who is the founder of Polkadot. But then from there, Charles Hoskinson did not agree with the Ethereum culture or the Ethereum ecosystem, so he went ahead and created Cardano in 2017. Except Cardano is going to move very slow. Instead of just throwing a product on the market, they were gonna move in stages. The first stage was the Byron era, and then from there, the Shelley era, which focused on decentralization. And fast forward to today, and Cardano is more decentralized relative to most other blockchains, currently with a staking ratio of 71% and multiple pools to stake Cardano. So they reach this phase. Often in the space, people will look at Cardano and say, they haven't done anything. Well, they've been doing things just very, very slowly. So they did conquer this stage of decentralization. But this doesn't really mean much if there aren't any dApps or smart contracts on Cardano because that's the point of this whole entire thing. The whole point is to create decentralized smart contracts. So even though Cardano at that stage was decentralized, they didn't really have any dApps or users. And this is when the third stage came along and that is Gogan, which focused on smart contracts. And then finally, in September of 2021, Cardano gained smart contract capability following the Alonzo hard fork. But this update was a bit of a disappointment. Leading up to this hard fork, people were imagining that after this hard fork, Cardano will have apps just like Ethereum. There will be users. There will be all these applications and high volume, but that wasn't really the case. Following this hard fork, it seemed like nothing really happened. People weren't really using Cardano. And in this moment, we saw the classic case of buy the rumor, sell the news, following this actual upgrade. And then from here, things slowed down in the Cardano ecosystem. The price wasn't doing anything special and people were just waiting for something to happen. What many people were waiting for was Sunday Swap. This would be the first decentralized exchange on Cardano. But Sunday Swap continued to delay their launch. A lot of the excitement for Cardano kind of just swept away. And then finally, in January of 2022, Sunday Swap went live. But there was a problem. It caused a lot of congestion on Cardano, and users were even reporting failed transactions. So Cardano had decentralization and security, but they ran into issues with scalability. This is the blockchain trilemma that no one has been able to solve so far. This is the problem where a blockchain tries to have security, decentralization, and speed all at the same time. To date, no one has done this. And I wanna make it clear, to do this, it has to be for a sustained period. If you have a blockchain that has security, decentralization, and speed for a week or even a month or a couple months, they did not solve the problem. It needs to work for a sustained period. Also, something to note is that it needs to be handling high transaction volumes because basically any project can run with scalability and be fast and cheap if no one's really using it. But once it starts experiencing attacks and high volume, that is the real test. That is when it needs to sustain scalability. So for example, right now, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they're secure and decentralized but they are very slow and expensive. They lack scalability. 
Same thing when it comes to Cardano. It is secure and decentralized, but currently lacks scalability. Most other blockchains in this space, they have a focus on speed and then they lack either decentralization or security. So when it comes to Cardano, they are in the process of trying to solve this trilemma. And there is some good news. Just two days ago on July 3rd, the Cardano Vasil upgrade was successfully launched on the test net. The Vasil upgrade is focused on scalability. And you'll notice it says that it was launched on the test net. A test net is a sandbox environment in blockchain that is used before actually launching on the main net because you don't want to just launch on the main net with problems. Of course, there is a lot at risk. So currently, right now, the Vasil upgrade is on the test net. And this is what all blockchains do. Even right now, currently, Ethereum is using test nets in preparation for their merge on the main net. And the focus here is on scalability. The Vasil hard fork will allow faster block creation and greater scalability for dApps running on Cardano. But it's still a big if. Just because they say they're going to do it doesn't mean that it's actually going to work. And during this period of the test net, they are looking for any issues. And if they find issues or many issues, this can be delayed. But if things go smoothly, we can expect to see the actual Vasil upgrade on the Cardano main net by the end of July or potentially in August. But what does this mean for the price action of Cardano? Well, something very, very important to note is right now as I make this video, we are deep in a bloody bear market. So even if things go smoothly, expecting to see a skyrocket in the price of Cardano is a lot to ask for, right? We are in a deep, brutal bear market. But in cases like this, whether it is a successful hard fork or not, typically we do see the case of buy the rumor, sell the news. So a price increase and then following the actual upgrade, a drop off in price. But because again, we're in a bear market, maybe we don't see it this time around. But it's all about the long term. Most people that are trading crypto end up losing. It's all about the long term. And it's pretty simple. If this hard fork is successful and Cardano can sustain scalability with high transaction volume for a pretty long time, I'm not talking about for one day or two weeks, but maybe, you know, for a few months and then maybe from there a few years, if they can do that and solve the blockchain trilemma, it will be very, very valuable. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's Cardano or not. Whoever solves the blockchain trilemma will be a very valuable blockchain. I do think that Cardano does have a chance to do so, but it's not a guarantee. But I want to know from you guys, do you think that Cardano will solve the blockchain trilemma? And if you don't, who do you think will be the first blockchain to do so? Comment down below. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.